Um, I don't know if everyone here knows who I am. Um, you see me up here a bit. Uh, my name is Oliver Jones. I work for Sean uh, at Itty Bitty Apps. Um, currently at REA doing the realestate.com.au app for iPhone and iPad. Um, anyway, um, I recently started using app code pretty solidly, so I figured I'd come and talk to, to you all and tell you why. Um, if you develop Mac and iOS apps, you probably have a pretty abusive relationship with Xcode. Um, so I was also in that abusive relationship, and I got out of that abusive relationship. <laughs> um, well, I almost got out of it. I still use Xcode a little bit. Um, but anyway, what I am using now is app code um, to do pretty much about 90% of my development work. Um, and app code is made by these guys, JetBrains. Um, a bit of history on me, um, I started doing Java development in the early 2000s and quickly discovered their top product, IntelliJ. Uh, and then in the mid 2000s, I started doing .NET uh, code and uh, they had ReSharper. Um, and lately I've been doing some Ruby stuff and using RubyMine, so I'm a bit of a diehard JetBrains fan. Um, and when they first announced app code, I checked it out. Uh, the 1.0, but it was crap, so I didn't use it. Um, and then not too long ago, I heard about 1.5 betas being released, and they're quite good with their betas. They, anyone can download them and use them for 30 days, and they keep refreshing them over that course of that, so you can sort of preview a, a version before you have to pay for it. Um, and as basically on the day that they announced 1.5 release, I whipped out my credit card and went, thanks, so I have that. Um, and uh, I'll go through a bunch of reasons why uh, in a minute. Um, one of the things that you hear a lot of, of iOS developers complaining about is you know, bugs in Xcode or just in the iOS tools or Mac tools in general. And you go to, you go to um, Bug Reporter, you, know, you go to Radar, and you scream into the void. Uh, and you get nothing back except for, please upload a sample project or duplicate. Um, and uh, one of the things I love about dealing with JetBrains is that it's not like that. In fact, last night, I mean, Apco's not perfect. It has its own bugs. It has its own issues. Um, and I found a couple last night preparing for this talk. And I filed bugs. And within 20 minutes, I got a response. And they marked it a major bug. And my second one, they assigned someone to work on it, um, all within about 20 minutes of me filing them. So um, that is very different from dealing with Apple. <laughs> which is part of the reason why I like them so much. Um, and that is the end of the slides. Um, so what I thought I would do uh, is sort of run through sort of what, what these amazing Czech coders have made. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is I will, I've great created this silly app, which is, um, Actually, should probably have no code in it. Didn't prepare, re prepare. Anyway, just forget you ever saw that. Um, so I've got this little app, and this is, oh, well, I suppose I should sort of introduce the idea in general. Um, it's a Java app, um, but that doesn't make it crap. Um, it doesn't look that much different. I'm running it in full screen mode. Um, it's not, you know, it acts as a pretty you know, normal Mac citizen in that, re in that respect. Um, it doesn't look too bad, doesn't look any worse than Xcode in my opinion. Um, and, you know, it has all the usual business that you would expect from an IDE with, you know, split panes and all the, you know, visual, you know s source control, everything you'd basically expect from an IDE um, user interface. Uh, and it is actually really fast. It's a lot faster actually than Xcode, even though it's a Java app. If you have a huge text file um, or a big bit of source, if I find my other window, my other project, I've got the, um, got the uh, Wikimedia, Wikipedia, official Wikipedia app source code here. Um, you know, scrolling performance is pretty good. Um, in fact, it's better than Xcode. Uh, Things are snappy, it never crashes. I've been using it for more than a month and it crashed on me once and that was during the beta period. Um, 
it, it's just pretty damn rock solid. Um, all right, so I'll just go and explore some, where's the other key? All right, so the real power of, of all of JetBrains' products is really comes from their um, refactoring tools and sort of programmer, user, programmer productivity perspective. Um, it just does a lot of stuff for you that you have to do by yourself um, in Xcode or any other editor. Uh, and, you know, so it, it has um, really good autocomplete um, that works all of the time. Um, so here we start with, say, UI label. Um, no suggestions, whatever. Here I am, failing. <laughs> here we go. No suggestions. All right, UI label. Let's try again. Um, um, you know, like it inserted the star for me. Oh, okay. Um, it's, oh man, it fails on me spectacularly when I have to show people it. <laughs> anyway, all right, we'll just start doing some things here. Oh man. <laughs> all right. Anyway, all right, you're able, all right. So that time it worked. All right, you'll notice when I started typing CG Rect, I guess suggesting the most likely one uh, based on the parameter type. Um, it, you know, control space, control shift space, and it gives me all of the things it knows about the return CG Recs. So I can um, then start going, well, what is it? It's make Rect, isn't it? So I just MR, uh, get it right all the Fuck's sake. Oh, it's wreck mate. Ah, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I am. All right, wreck mate. So you don't even have to type the whole thing, just the initial things, initial uh, uppercase characters. Um, so what are we going to do? Here we go. One, stick it in uh, there. We'll make it 20 pixels, uh, 200 pixels wide and 20 pixels high. Um, and what else are we going to do with it? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Put a label text on it. Okay. Another little things it does for you is things like putting the, the at in there without having to type it. Just starting a quote. Um, um, it also does things like, you know, when you're inside, if you're going, you know, you press the quote, it doesn't put two quotes in. Um, it recognizes that you're closing a enclosing quote. Um, what else we need to do? We need to put it on. We need to put our label on our um, add sub use. Oh, what the? Right. What are we doing here? Oh, dot view. Should have written notes. Anyway, all right. There we go. Add it to our view. All right, so. One label is pretty pretty crap. So what we want to do is um, turn that into a method. So we can extract a method, and it knows what I want to return because it's analysed the code that I've selected, um, and it knows that because I needed it a little bit earlier. Um, I need that variable later. So it's like okay, you need the label that you were talking about. All right, so we're going to call it make label. Um, all right, so that's cool. Made our label. Um, I'm like, oh, okay. Actually, I want to put those, put those down the the views. It's just a simple, you know, iOS project. I want to put a whole whole bunch of labels on a screen. All right, so extract variable. Uh, only replace that occurrence, and we're going to call that the y coordinate. I'm like, well, actually, that needs to be a parameter. So select that, make it a parameter. Yeah, call it, yeah, what I'll do for the moment. Uh, and then we need to rename our method. Um, so it's not just make label, make label with y chord. Whatever. Renames it. Um, what else are we going to do? Oh, we want that label there to be a parameter as well. 
um, collect label. Oh. Label text, and you notice that it's suggesting the parameter, like part of the sign um, selector signature, um, based on the variable I'm typing. Put that in. And you notice it's been editing the code and below there, of course, as well, inserting where it needs to be. Um, OK, cool. That gives us um, our little uh, our label. Um, now, what I want is to repeat this. So I want to surround, what is that? Control Option T. Surround that in a while or a for. You see, do it in a for loop. Um, whatever, i equals zero. It's in 10. All right. Um, cool. All right. So that's sort of done that for me. Um, what else do we need to do? Well, that's probably it, enough for now. Oh, actually, there's one other thing. I created some of these um, things like the surrounds um, uh, feature, like being able to select content and uh, sort of say, well, I want to s turn this into an if block or I want to turn this into a while loop or or whatever, you can create your own. So I've created one, which is for localizing strings. Um, and so this is a string here, we want a localized version of it. So I'm going to go uh, and surround localize. And so that's inserted the local localized string macro and given me the label and then asking me, position my cursor where I want to put the description, whatever, blah, literally. Um, and then I tab out and it takes me to the end. Um, so there's a little template, and uh, you can, there's all sorts of ones. There's, um, you know, or built-in ones, and you can add your own. And there's a lot of power to these. So, say I have uh, an NS array. Um, uh, whatever. Um, let's fix the formatting. Um, okay, so I want to do an each a for each loop over that. So there's a, there should be a, there we go. So it has detected that in the previous scope, there's an array, there's an iterable um, array, and it knows that in the for each um, sort of macro expandable, um, what they call live template, uh, that position is like guess a variable based on a scope. So it's saying, oh, that's the array, and then it'll, um, yeah, and then you go back through the template and, and uh, whatever, uh, and change the rest. I kind of screwed up the template by exiting out of the tab zone. But anyway, so it's stuff like that. Just once you get used to using the macros and the key commands, just makes sort of simple things really quick. Um, you just start banging out code and really um, sort of rushing along. Um, uh, it, there's all sorts of other, you know, things that we'll do. Like here, we're in view to load. Often, you'll um, you're actually saying, well. I'm going to create, um, you know, a new sub view or whatever UI button. Um, um, where are we going? UI button. Well, it doesn't really have to be actual code. Um, oh, sorry. Um, you want to. You're starting. You just type button, right? You don't actually give it a type. You're just like, okay, I want a new new member variable called button, all right, and it's going to be UI button. And so you're like, oh, well, that needs to be a, that needs to be like a, an instance variable. So, you know, alt tab, and that's like, oh, okay, create that as an instance variable. All right, yeah, UI button. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I want that to be a property. Um, okay, that's cool. It's made it a property for me. Um, and this must be an Arc project because it's not asking me to deallocate. it. Uh, if this wasn't an ARC project, it would have recognized that um, the uh, variable wasn't what it released. And so it would warn me saying, you need to release this in your dialic. Uh, and with another alt enter, it would have inserted it in the dialic and built the entire dialic method for me without me doing anything. Um, and you know, any time that occurs in your code, you'll notice um, it'll be prompting you. You get a little tense saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Um, things like, you know, using a signed integer as an index into an array or something, you go, hey, that's not supposed to be like that. Um, and, you know, suggest that you fix it and, you know, it's alt enter and it's just fixed straight away. Um, 
What else was I going to show you? There's a bunch of other things. Right. Oh yeah, this localization. There's another example of um, of the hints. Like you see that. I don't know if you see the slight yellow gradation there. It's sort of indicating. And all that's themable, by the way. This is just the default um, Xcode-like um, color scheme. Um, it's hinting me here, saying yeah, there's no deal localization, even though you have an English and a German localization file, and I can go into and uh, provide localizations, and that goes away. And so what that's done is it's put them in the both localization files for me. Uh, and oh shit, what have I done now? God. Closing things. Project, come back, project. Um, something else it does is not doing right now, I'm not sure actually what triggers this, but it notices when you've got localized strings and it actually gets rid of this whole section here and just puts in the string that it's localized to. So it's sort of, and then you hover over it and it shows you the macro, which is uh, very nice if you're doing localization work. Um, but I don't know, it has to reread the file or something. At the moment it's not doing it. Uh, what else? Okay, so some other um, awesome functionality. Um, so I've got this little demo view um, uh, class here, and I've got a little couple of sort of classes of it. Uh, you'll um, notice also on demo view here, it's um, it's got uh, a method there, which is um, sort of in the base class, and in one of my subclasses here, I've got this protocol demo protocol. And so none of these classes actually have code in them except for the base class, if I'm right. Oh, that one does, okay. So um, here, say for example, I'm like, oh, I, okay, this is a thing, I need to override implementation of my parent. So I just go override methods, and it gives me all of the methods I want. Uh, I can override, so I'm like, okay, well, there was the be awesome, be most awesome there, so um, implement that. and. You, you'll see in the gutter region here, it's got these little icons which indicate that A, I'm overloading a method. So I'm overloading draw rect here, or I'm overloading that. And you can navigate to the thing you're overloaded. Um, and of course, you can navigate back as well. Um, in the case of, uh, say, draw rect, um, actually, if I go into the other subclass, implement draw rect. Um, Uh, when I go back to here, when I'm navigating, it's actually going to say, okay, which one do you want? So, you know, oh, well, I want the one in subclass B. Um, and all of that's available through keyboard commands as well, so you can get quite proficient at learning how, what the commands are to, to find the um, base classes or, you know, which ones are implemented or, you know, you can say, okay, uh, have I got any subclasses? Oh, um, so it's showing, say, here's your superclass and, um, and so on. And then, you know, who are my subclasses, um, stuff like that. So it's very quick and easy to sort of to find your way around code and, and, and figure out what's going on. Um, it does things like marking dead code and uh, uh, like methods, like be useless here is never used anywhere. Um, now I could, um, I could uh, choose to delete that and it'll scan the code, looking, making sure it's not used anywhere. Or I can say, well, actually, that's supposed to be in the public interface. So put that in the public interface, and now it's in the public interface, even though it's not used anyway. Um, anyway, uh, the other things like you notice here, it's got brush three here is not used, so I can say, well, hang on, just delete that then. Whoops, wrong choice. Delete the entire thing. Um, the other thing I really dis I discovered yesterday, which was awesome, is it can do really fancy things. Like uh, you'll notice that this code here is almost identical. The only thing that's different is brush one, brush two, um, and based on the mode. And it can replace the whole conditional with a ternary operator. Um, so yeah, simplifying my code there. Um, yeah, so that's, I thought that was pretty flash. Um, what else was I going to do? Um, oh yeah, the other thing it can do. You notice in my um, oh yeah, the I had a protocol in here, right? Okay, this protocol. Um, so I need to implement on my method here, I need to, even though my protocol is optional, I should really implement, um, I remember the damn key command. Anyway, tried to do this just slightly slower way. Yeah. 
implement methods. Okay, so I had a protocol on this method. So this is really awesome when you're doing things like UI table delegates. Um, you just, you know, here I've only got one there, but I can like hold down shift and select all of the methods and then just go enter and it just writes them all out um, and, you know, just start filling in the code rather than having to sort of type everything and remember which one it's called and what, what the starts with. Is it, you know, table view or whatever? Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh, you can do things, yeah, there's all sorts of, um, like I showed you extract method and extract parameters and interfaces uh, and uh, instance variables. In um, refactoring, um, okay, so we can rename, change the signature, can it safe delete it. Um, you can also introduce de defines and type defs and you can inline methods. So if like, um, if I had some, like do something awesome, actually be mostly useless. Be most awesome actually, where is it? Um, so be useless. Say I actually use be useless here. Um, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, you can inline it. You say, well, I actually put all the content um, of that method there. Um, or, you know, go the other way. And you can do that with all sorts of things. Uh, with any sort of structure in the code, you can sort of extract things out, put them back in, um, and re re just generally uh, mess with them uh, in a reliable fashion really quickly. Um, so things I can extract, you can even extract whole blocks of code and turn them into block parameters to find the type for the block parameter for you. Um, uh, you know, turn like a variable declaration into a type def so you, or a parameter definition. So if you've got a block parameter definition, turn that into a type def. Uh, whole bunch of stuff. And, uh, and this is like version, this is version 1.5. Um, if you've ever used IntelliJ or even Eclipse, heaven forbid, um, or any of the major like Java IDEs, you're probably familiar with things like move method, extract superclass, um, uh, push down, which is take a superclass and push all of its methods into its, all of its base class, all of its subclasses. So you sort of extract, taking out a layer of your inheritance hierarchy. Um, one thing you can do uh, in app code is uh, extract a category, so you can take be um, be useless and put it on everything uh, with a couple of clicks of the mouse and keyboard. Um, the well, actually, just put it on demo so class A, but anyway, never mind. Um, so yeah, you can. That's about as close as they they come in version 1.5 to some of the more powerful refactorings that are in. Uh, IntelliJ and Resharpa. Um, a lot of the ones that are in those products are scheduled for the version 2 release. So they're all prioritized in their bug tracking system for version 2, which will be absolutely awesome. I wrote a little bit of documentation uh, over here using um, the sort of header doc style that Apple uses in some of its APIs um, inconsistently. But uh, anyway, uh, the so I'm I'm using that somewhere, I'm pretty sure. So it's find usages, find usages project files. All right, so I'm using it over here. All right, so we'll go there. Um, and this is a proper find usages. This isn't like find, you know, a text string like an Xcode where you try and find things. This is actually showing you the context which is used in. If it you know these sort of tree, this tree of things is um, just because I'm using it one place. It's only one tree, one tree thing. But if it was a more um, a type that I was using more in a whole bunch of different places will show me it used as a parameter or in all sorts of different contexts. And, and you can filter all of that in, um, in this view here. Um, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Um, uh, oh yeah, the documentation. So one of the things I hate about Xcode is like you can option click on a thing and it shows a little thing of, of, of help and documentation. And that's really handy, but there's no way you can put your own code in that system. And this, uh, there's some magic that I'm unaware of. Um, you can create your own doc sets and put them in like the doc set browser or into Dash if you um, if you like using Dash. Um, but here, it actually puts the docs here. So with a bash of F1, I can see exactly how awesome that method was. Um, and you know, make it bigger, smaller, whatever. Get rid of it. 
um, and I can pin that somewhere in my UI, I can put it as a sidebar or something, so every time I'm clicking on things it's showing me the, the necessary documentation. The other nice things it does for documentation is that it shows you things like what the parameters should be, the bash of a button, you can say you're, say make rec for example, I'm like, oh, which way is it around? Um, and it and it can show you um, what the, I'm not saying twice, but anyway. Um, you know, you're like, ah, oh, okay, it's X, Y with height. Um, whereas, you know, you'd have to normally either use, you know, option quick, um, click or, or go to the code and go, okay, and then remember that and go back and go, okay, well, you know, for, for some of the more complex longer methods or even you stuff in your own, the stuff you're not using all the time or your own code, that can be really handy. Fine usage, I kind of showed you a little bit of fine usages. Um, this code is not really complex enough to, to really show that off. Um, uh, to its fullest. I'll maybe show you that in a, a moment. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of different modes, like you can say, well, find all usages in this file, or find your usages across the whole project, or in just sub subset, um, uh, stuff like that. The, um, the other cool thing, which um, it's pretty stupid in here because this would knock his socks off, um, it's got really good um, test support. Uh, at least for send test. In version 2 they'll be supporting Kiwi um, and GHUnit and a bunch of others. It still runs the GHUnit and, and other tests or Kiwi tests. It doesn't, just doesn't look quite as nice. Um, if I just switch to the t unit tests um, uh, target. Uh, this is the one thing I do hate about it. It's the indexing. But anyway. When you switch from target to target, it has to re-index things because it figures out based on like what your includes in R and stuff. It like re realigns its indexes to um, you know your different targets and clue paths and, and what have you. So it has to keep keep that up to date. Um, but if I go to the test case here, why well, should I just run the tests? Um, and this is going to run it on the simulator. This X code will run your code in the simulator or on your device, um, and you can also debug uh, in the IDE. I don't use the debugger so much. Um, that's interesting. Uh, mainly because it's a little bit slower than Xcode's debugger. Um, not sure why it's slower, but uh, it's just I find the debug cycle a little bit better in in Xcode. Um, it's a little bit faster, sort of, to run and to debug your your app, especially on the device. Um, they are aware of some of the deficiencies of their debugger, and that's definitely scheduled um, for improvement. Um, and yeah, there's a cage because it, it, getting your app to run on a device in particular is a little bit of a black art. And there's tools like Fruitstrap, and it actually uses Fruitstrap. But it seems to me, at least in my use of Fruitstrap and um, and AppCode, is that Fruitstrap, and it's not uh, AppCode's fault, is just a little bit flaky. It doesn't always seem to connect to the device, but then neither does Xcode sometimes. Um, so yeah, so it's I, as I said, it's not perfect. So I still use Xcode a little bit. Uh, mainly around debugging. Um, anyway, so it found that I failed a test and it's highlighting it and you can explore the little like which tests failed and you can go, oh yeah, well, I'll run that test only. Um, you know, like imagining that I fixed the problem, which is a, probably a fail. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's really, it's a lot better workflow than, the, well, um, for unit testing anyway, than Xcode. Um, where it didn't, unless you go into Xcode's sort of um, build configurations and stuff, you can't really select which tests to run and so on. Um, which is why people still like using GHUnit because it has that client which you can just say, oh, just run that one test. And of course you can debug all your unit tests and stuff in the IDE as well, which is pretty cool. AppCode um, is primarily targeted at Objective-C. Uh, coding, so Mac and iOS. It does also support C++ coding, um, so if you, you're writing C or C++ code, um, it, it happily um, syntax highlights and does all the auto-completion and I believe um, the refactorings, though I haven't tried the refactorings, um, will work. Uh, they don't support uh, yet, it's on the, on the roadmap, um, much of the CX, um, C++ 11 sort of um, new stuff, new exciting things like um, type inference. But it's, yeah, as I said, it's all on their sort of to-do list for the version two. Um, what else? I was gonna show you um, an actual much bigger source code um, 
not that much bigger, but it's um, an actual app. You'll notice on the right here is a whole bunch of yellow. Um, this is sort of app code telling you you're doing something wrong. And this is the Wikimedia one. Um, and so here we've got well, an unused import statement. Well, um, let's just get rid of that. Um, it will, you know, if you, it'll actually analyze your imports and figure out exactly which ones you should have, um, which is quite nice. Um, what else we got here? Um, oh, what do we have here? Access to define a synthesized property. Okay, so we've got a synthesize on there. But here's some other ones. <coughs> this is variable title is not released in Dialic. The static analyzer doesn't notice this. So um, AppCode and the guys at Gemrains have written their own AST and like language parser uh, and static analysis toolset, and they've got them obviously, obviously tried and tested on a lot of other languages. Uh, and so, sort of. This IDE, in combination with the static analyzer, finds a shit ton of bugs and things you miss and uh, things you're doing wrong in your code without even noticing. And obviously, the guys who wrote this Wikimedia, Wikipedia viewer are doing things wrong because they're not releasing a whole bunch of shit. Um, uh, but I mean, it's not a very complex app. They probably knocked it up in a weekend. Um, yeah, so the, it, I've, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty much in love with um, AppCode. Uh, and I'm glad that there's someone out there who is listening to their developers a little bit more than Apple is, um, or at least publicly listening. Um, I'm sure come dub dub, Apple will come out and go, look at Xcode 5, isn't it fan fucking fantastic? And everyone will clap and cheer and go, yes, it is a lot better than 4, but that's still shit. Um, so it's really good that you've got people like Jeff Brains, you know, push, you know, pushing the, their own card along and um, and sort of providing an alternative uh, if you are willing to sort of switch your brain around a little bit and do things a little bit differently because it is a bit different. Um, you know, you're used to doing these certain sort of key presses and they're different in this code, and though you can remap some of them um, or all of them to different things, or you know, you're used to the project viewer working a certain way. You're used to maybe even editing project settings on the project. That's one thing AppCo doesn't do. It can't edit the project at all, other than adding and removing files. So if you're not using XC config files already, you, um, you kind of have to with AppCode unless you want to flip back to Xcode, which you can easily do. I mean, it's just you know open an Xcode somewhere along here. I hardly ever do it. I usually have them both running at the same time, so I just alt-tab between them. But anything that it can't handle, you can just do in Xcode. Stuff like Interface Builder. Obviously, uh, it doesn't have an interface builder built in. Uh, so, you know, you've got an IB file. Um, where am I? You know, like I've got a couple of IB storyboards here. You know, you double click on them, you know, and it comes, it's just, X, you know, it's just XML in the editor, but it'll boot up Xcode if it can. It's trying to. Um. One thing that we've had all of is that it It'll open, it'll import the um, Xcode projects. Mm. That's probably the most important thing for me was that the structure's the same. Yes, yes, the structure is all the same, and uh, it even gives you um, uh, a bunch of nice. It gives you alternative view, um, which Xcode doesn't, which is the file structure. So you can do everything in terms of files rather than uh, and folders rather than groups and what have you. Um, it also, when you create a group, it'll create the folder and so on for you, um, and keep them all organised if you move them around which Xcode doesn't do, um, if you like working that way. Um, we tend to just chuck everything in the same directory. Um, yeah, and, and so, uh, I mean, I really haven't found too many faults in AppCode. Um, and if you are interested, I highly recommend checking it out. How's it do with uh, code formatting? Can you, like, uh, that's something else I wanted to talk about. You can. It's actually good. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and the preferences, and there are a lot of preferences. Uh, a there is a search box. <laughs> it's very handy. Um, anyway, code style. So, and the other thing is also um, something else to mention highlighted here is that app code isn't just an app, uh, an IDE for, um, you know, it, it will happily do your HTML and your CSS and provide you all the autocomplete and refactoring and stuff for, for your JavaScript and your HTML and stuff if you're doing kind of hybrid apps or, um, or just you know, help pages or whatever it is in your app. Uh, it's also based, because it's based on the IntelliJ um, framework, um, IntelliJ plugins work. So 
Um, I have somewhere in here. I have um, ah, cancel that. Um, something oh, I must have turned it off. Um, I added a Jenkins plugin to it, so uh, it can monitor. It, you know, highlights, monitors our build server. Um, I added the Markdown plugin, so I can edit Markdown files and see the preview in the editor. Um, you know, there's a bunch of other things like that that come from the IntelliJ and Java community, uh, which can be quite handy. Um, the, yeah, what we need is some maybe some uh, Mac slash uh, iOS specific plugins that help us with our other um, tasks. And all of the plugin API is not all written by JetBrains, it's written by their sort of developer community. They've got a big open source API um, sort of jar bundle you can download if you want to crack out your Java skills. Um, and extend the IDE, which is something you can't do in Xcode. Uh, you can't adapt it to your own behavior. But getting back to what Sean was talking about, style, like for code, one of the things you, you, you really badly need when you're generating a lot of code with little helpers and, and um, shortcuts is you need to make sure that that code you generate is in your style guide or is matching what the rest of your code looks like. Uh, and of course, unless you go and edit every single one of the live templates or template file templates in, um, in Xcode, that's not going to happen. Uh, so what JetBrains do is they provide uh, a very comprehensive style editor. Um, so it gives you like a sample of what your code should look like and then you fiddle with the settings. And uh, that wasn't, didn't change anything visible. Maybe not a good example. Where's we, we got like wrapping and braces. Here's a good one. Who likes their braces on the line uh, with the selector? Um, no, it's in the face, where are we? Or something, so you've got like method call. Good God, where is it? Uh, I don't know. You go through this once and you set it up and you forget about it. Um, there we go, it's changing things. But if it doesn't match the format, you, um, well anything it generates it will apply the format to, as long as you, there's usually when you, you specify in the live templates, um, uh, elsewhere in here, if I search for a lot of templates. Um, like so any of the file templates or the, or the live templates for the code you're writing, um, there's usually a reformat op according to style option. So, you know, this could be anything, this text box here could, you know, anything you like, any format, any style, whatever, you don't really have a lot of space, but it'll then reformat all that according to the style you set. And the style can be a global style, sort of just your style is how everything should be. It can also be a project specific style. So it'll stash that in a bunch of dot files which you can check into your Git repository uh, and you know, share that amongst your developers so everyone's coding in the same style. Um, and then of course, you, know, you come across, you see some ancient code or whatever that's looking real ugly and you're like, oh, that's horrible. You just go reformat and it changes it. Um, and so you just, you know, reapplies the style to everything that she's um, selected. Um, which is kind of crazy to do if you care about version control. But <laughs> it is sometimes necessary if you've got some horrible legacy code or something from a developer you don't care about anymore. Um, That's a bit about you, boss. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. Um, what else is in preferences? Um, yeah, as I said, there's all sorts of. Um, yeah, all sorts of additional stuff you can customize. You can really go to town on customizing app code. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it supports more version control systems than um, the next code if you're a Perforce user or um, use Mercurial or something for some reason, um, even TFS if you're a Windows dev. Um, so yeah, it sort of sits better in, in, um, in the corporate world. Um, like if you're using ClearCase or something, if you cursed with that horrible abomination. Uh, it's, there's an open source ClearCase plugin for um, all of the IntelliJ based products so it'll work with that code. Um, and uh, yeah, just you know, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, there's a lot there, it's too much to cover really. Any questions? Because we're talking the Apple's doc sets and show it in the UI. Yep, yeah, if I look, click on a like UI application and go F1. Shows me the docs from the doc sets, um, and I, I've come to use um, Dash quite a lot. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. There we. Uh, Dash is an open source doc set viewer, 
I think, open source, maybe not. It's free on the App Store anyway. And every release seems to change the UI. This is um, released a couple of days ago. And it's um, um, probably not working. Oh, I'm putting it in the wrong place. What the fuck am I doing here? So it's actually a lot faster than using um, uh, Apple's sort of built-in one to the, in the organizer. It's index seems to be a lot faster at indexing the doc set dash. So that's well worth getting from the App Store if you don't already have it. Um, and so, yeah, so I kind of use that, a combination of sort of quick help and, and dash rather than the standard doc browser. And you can add your own doc sets and stuff to dash and it has a bunch for like Ruby code and all sorts of other stuff as well. Any other questions? Uh, how much does it cost? Uh, it is $99. So it's not a lot. Uh, that's for a personal license. Um, so they li license either, as to, if you're buying as a company, they tend to charge you more. Um, uh, but if you're buying as a company, they offer like a licensed server and stuff. So you can you know, share, if, if you've got roaming devs or something, they can share licenses and things. Um, but yeah, as, a, as an individual, uh, it's licensed personally. You can use it on as many computers as you own, but obviously you can't use more than one computer at once. Uh, so, but it does, I think, check if they're on the same network at the same time. So no, no cheating. Um, and upgrades are uh, about half that, like 50 bucks a year. Um, basically, they release so pretty much. If anything go by on their on the, all their other products, they pretty much guaranteed to release a major version every year. Uh, and those major versions tend to have pretty significant improvements. Um, and yeah, there's just a sort of rolling every every year. If you upgrade to the next version, it's 50 bucks. So it's not onerous at all. Uh, yes. Um, well, the only drama I ever have um, with, between the IDEs um, is say when I do a Git rebase or something and there's a conflict and Xcode crashes and AppCode doesn't. Uh, that's the only thing that I've noticed. Yeah, no, this, I haven't, haven't any, had really any problems. There's probably the only other thing I have noticed is uh, you, I don't think in AppCode you can, like Xcode is quite, can get quite complex with how it manages groups and how those f groups match the file system. And, um, and and stuff like that. Like you can change like is the group relative to the parent group or is it relative to the project? And you know that dictates how when you go like right click new file in that group, where that file will by default try to be created and so on. Um, and I've had issues where if that's kind of a bit wacky already in Xcode, um, that app code just drops the file in sort of the root directory of the project, which is not hard to fix. It's just a little bit of a niggle. If you sort of start the other way, if you sort of start your project in app code and you don't fiddle with anything like that, then app code's pretty sensible about managing all the files. Um, that's the only little glitch or gotcha, gotcha I've come across like, um, in my usage of it. Okay, great. Thank you. Melbourne Cocoa Heads is brought to you by Itty Bitty Apps, but we couldn't do it without the generous sponsorship of Shine Technologies. Thanks also to RMIT for providing the venue and to our many regular attendees, speakers and volunteers. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, you can visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or by following Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.